ladies and gentlemen, would like to welcome you aboard. We kindly ask that you fasten your seatbelt. And eat your fucking nuts. This is Confessions on the Fly with... LJ. And Flight Attendant Joe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're so excited that you're here. Yay! I'm so thrilled for this episode. This is going to be very exciting this is because very exciting. we are, this is not a duo today, ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> this is a triad or a threesome. Because it's a threesome. It's a threesome. And I'm not going to lie to you. I've been waiting for this threesome for a long fucking Woo! time. So I <laughs> want you guys to welcome our pilot friend, Adam, on today. He has called in. Adam, are you there? I am here. Thank you for having me today. Oh, my God. We Yay. haven't had you yet, but we probably will. I'm We're going to so think excited. about it later. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank excited. you so much. You are the first pilot that we have had on Confessions on the Fly. So thank you for taking time. I'm sure you're very, very busy up there in the skies, giving your flight attendants a hard time. So um, Every once in a while, but yeah. I'm very honored to be here. Thank oh, you very much. Well, thank cool. you so much. Oh. So, um this episode that we want to talk about and the reason we invited you in is because we want to talk about flight attendant pilot relationships mm -hmm. and sure. getting along and what can we do? What stories can we share that maybe we'll get along better up there at 38,000 feet? Yeah. If you yeah. can give us a little okay. background about you and how long you've been flying or anything like that, that you feel comfortable sharing, that would be awesome. Sure. I've, uh, I've actually been flying for 20 about 22 years wow. been getting paid to fly for 17 years been with the airline since 2007 cool wow. so since yeah, bounced around a little bit but uh yeah i've been in the airlines for 11 years now now so what so you said 20 some odd years but so what were you doing before that those 11 years that you were getting paid crawling he was a child <laughs> yeah i mean my god yeah, that's would, a lifetime well no 2007 that was 11 years ago i was so um, uh, maybe I'm asking you I, how old you are. Well, I'm about 40, but okay. I started flying when I was young in high school and then went through college, did my flight training there and then um, finished my training right before the September 11th uh, attack. So it was actually on September 10th. So oh, wow. everything got shut down with hiring and I kind of scrambled around, became a flight instructor and then flew corporate jets around all over the place until I went to the airlines wow. in 2007. Okay. So, corporate jets, that must yeah, have been it was, interesting. Uh, it was definitely interesting. Was that corporate it jets? It was, so the uh, destinations were fun. Would you stay Go in ahead, places? No, that's okay. Would you stay in, w flying corporate? Would you stay in places longer than you stay working in commercial? Yes, we uh, we we could go somewhere for a day. We could go somewhere for twelve days, and um, we we would pack our golf bags or our snow boots or snowboards, depends on where we were, and uh, just had a good old time. Oh my god! And that's how you started. Like that must have been insane. It was. It was. It was never my goal to be a corporate pilot, but. Doing it at the time was amazing. I got out of it right before the economy kind of tanked in 2008, but uh, okay. it was a good run. It was wow. a lot of fun. Wow. wow. That 12 days. Like, where would you go? Yeah, tell I need us, to know about that. Tell us. Yeah, I'm turned on right now. Tell <laughs> us mean, where you would go for 12 days with your golf bag. We go all over Florida. We go up to Aspen, stay in the middle of downtown Aspen and go skiing up there. Nice. You know, we do a West Coast trip where we bounce in from Southern California all the way up to Napa and then go across to Vegas, hang out in Vegas for a couple of days and back up to the mountains. And oh my I mean, God. you would have some fun trips and yeah. uh, whether it be down to the islands or, you know, across and, to Europe, wherever. And you had did you guys have a flight attendant? On my plane, I actually did not. Oh, there were okay. a couple of the bigger planes that did, but I never had a corporate flight attendant. Okay. Wow. wow. Are, we're getting some feed. Are you getting that yeah. feedback? Do you hear that feedback, Adam, or no? I don't. No. Okay. 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 All right. Um, I just wanted to make sure people could hear you. So we had tw that's amazing. So, so you would just, they would just say you're gone for 12 days or you were just on all the time? 20, like when were um, you off? Um, usually we knew when we got the trip schedule, which days you'd actually fly. So you go somewhere, let's say down to Florida and they'd say, okay, you're going to be sitting for three days before we need you again. So we just go 
hop around, go get a free round of golf from the airport. They usually provide a golf for us, and uh, oh my gosh, just had a good time. We had a great meal budget, and uh, why would expended, you ever leave? Expensed everything. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah, LJ, why would you yeah, ever leave? That what sounds happened? Amazing. I want really, that job. It was, <laughs> yeah. It, at the time, it was the schedule and wanting to kind of settle down as okay. with a family and everything. Oh my God, you're because, like a real man. Yeah. Um, I'm one of the few. I've, I have. A, I live in LA, so they're very hard to come by. So she has you're helped. like you're like a unicorn. She hasn't met a real oh. man, and she's sitting next to me. So if that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> but this isn't about. Me. Um, well, that makes sense because if you're married with kids, probably being that a corporate yeah, pilot does not, does not work, work very well. No, it, it was very – we get the call before the day of the trip, and it could be a day trip or, like uh, I said, it could be a 12-day trip. It was very hard to plan things out. Oh, right. moving to with, your Yeah, young kids yeah. and stuff like that must have been hard. Exactly. Okay. Now it's – I have more – control the schedule it's great i love okay. it yeah that's cool, good cool. now so you, when you did that there were no flight attendants so when you became a commercial airline pilot was that the first time you started interacting with flight attendants yes okay. yes okay. it was uh I, I had never at all had anyone in the back of the plane that i had to deal with now so, um <laughs> now you have to deal with us <laughs> now you deal with us <laughs> which yeah. is um, the other day um, I went on the flight attendant Joe Facebook page and I said, hey, guys, non-airline people, what are some things that you would want to hear from a pilot flight attendant conversation? And of course, you know, um, there were all the dirty, nasty, like, oh, how many, you know, do you do a guy and a girl on the same layover? And I'm like, God, <laughs> if, if I meet that person, that's amazing. That's a lot. <laughs> but then, you know, there were normal conver there were normal questions like, have you ever had have you ever worked with a flight attendant? who um, gave you a really hard time and like how did you handle that and what could we know yeah. from that experience so sure. that that doesn't happen to us I mean there have definitely been a few that are a handful but you have to figure out what makes the flight attendant that you're dealing with click almost and work mm -hmm. because you are a crew. You have to make it work. If it's coming down to an emergency and the person in the back doesn't want to talk to you, that's not a good, good thing. Right. So, really, I mean, I've, I mean, I've had a couple of flight attendants that are just mean to right. everybody, whether it be passengers, coworkers, the pilots, and you just have to put on a, whether you put on a fake smile and be as nice as you can just kill them with kindness as much as you can mm -hmm. right and just get through that trip mm -hmm. because they i mean we're all in it together if something goes down i need to know what's going on in the back and right. we can't have that hostility between us exactly you have to have that commu lines of communication have to stay yes. open, at least civil to get through that I, kind of stuff i definitely think communication is the biggest thing and egos because you know i i work with some flight attendants who are like i i don't do anything for the flight deck or i do nothing mm -hmm. for them up there and i'm like why i don't, I don't understand yeah. or like i was a nurse before i was a flight attendant so I have it instilled in my brain that pilots are like doctors. That's how I look at this yeah. job. It's almost like being a nurse. You know, there's a call bell. Mm -hmm. You have doctors and pilots, mm -hmm. which are the same mentality the, with the God complex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I always f find when I'm working with pilots that if they come on and they're kind of um, dicks, yeah. excuse my language, yeah. I'm always like, oh, all yeah. right, um, let me let me be I'm extra nice. I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, like, what do you guys need? What do you guys need? And then and then they just go in the door. They just go in there and they close the door. And I worked with somebody a couple of weeks ago and she said they don't care about us. They just close the door and they don't care what happens back here. And I wanted to get your um, idea on that, Adam. Like, is that true? My, Would you say that? I, no. I don't believe that. I mean, I'm sure there are some people like that. And I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that there are some pilots like that. For me personally, I like to build a rapport with the flight times right from the beginning. When we get the uh, pre-flight briefing done, you got, you know, let, I let them know, you need anything, you let me know. I don't care if we're below 10,000 feet, if we're in the sterile cockpit. Mm -hmm. If you need something, you call me. Yeah. I'm here for you. I'm going to help you out right. no matter what. Yeah. And, you know, it's even little things like we have a quick turn between flights. You guys don't get to leave the aircraft a lot of times. Oh, my God. I will right. go up and get you food, get you a coffee, get you whatever you need. If we have to delay a flight for a few minutes because you guys need food or we need food up front, 
I'm going to do it. Yeah. I don't care. Right. And that right there builds the relationship, I feel, between the crew as well. It's like, I'm here for you. You know, let's break down the barriers a little bit and see if, you know, see what we can get in return. Right. Absolutely. I think that's a big thing, too. I, I, I've had those flights and those uh, relationships with pilots where, you know, at my airline, we work multiple legs a day. So we're right. up, down, up, down. We call it, sure. like the you know, the, the donkey trail or whatever right. going. And it's kind of, ins- you know, it's, it's a bit much when you see a pilot leave and come back on and have lunch and coffee for themselves. Oh, my God. And I'm like, I didn't want to go to the bathroom or drink something right. either. You know what I mean? That yeah. would have been nice. Or just like even uh, most 90 percent of the time I'm going to say no. Right. But, you know, just even the offer, it just shows that like. Like there's a little bit of communication and camaraderie of like, hey, guys, we're all in this together, you know. <laughs> I, I, and I also think um, listeners might not know that we don't stay with the pilots all the time. So you could work four no, flights no. in a day and that's four different sets of flight attendants and four different sets, sets of, of pilots. pilots. And so literally in, a, in the course of five minutes, you are actually making a relationship with somebody. If you're the lead flight attendant and the flight deck and you're like, hey, guys, you know, we could crash. So we need to be on the same page <laughs> and we need to be able to work together. And I'm meeting you in three minutes and we have to hurry up because now we have to start boarding. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I yep. and, and I think that is very stressful sometimes. Now, if you're flying yeah. and you're with the person all day long, then you're like by the third flight, you're like, hey, Bill, go get me a coffee. Yeah, exactly. Different you know? story. Yeah, I'll give you a yep. handy later, but just get me some coffee right now. Is there anything there particular go. that you like from flight attendants that you've worked with for years or whatever or you see on a regular basis is there anything that you like or that makes you feel comfortable about this group of people like oh i know it's going to be a good day because this person's working and Hon- we have this rapport honestly or something. if just in that initial briefing just give me attention just for the two minutes that i brief you i've had a situation where i had a flight attendant i started briefing it was a new flight attendant mm-hmm. my fourth briefing for the day with a different crew mm-hmm started briefing i look at the flight attendant and she's texting and all i get from her she looks at me and says what oh and i yeah. said okay well the what is we need to have the safety brief you need to put right. your phone down yeah. or else we're going to deal with this elsewhere whether yeah. it means getting you taken off the flight because you don't want to deal with the crew or we can just take care of it right now mm-hmm. have so, you ever have you ever had to have a flight attendant taken off for um for something like that not for that but i have for an illness she wouldn't call in sick mm-hmm. and she was really really sick oh and so we had her removed and right. she was very upset with us um okay. now it, go ahead it was sorry. really was it the right thing to do in our eyes yes mm-hmm. in front of the passengers yes she mm-hmm. was a mess and she was like I really mean, sick. She was really, really oh, sick. Yeah. And she's scared yeah. to get, you know, a sick call or something taken whatever away from her from yeah. the company. Exactly. Right. So there it is or whatever. That's really the only time I've had a flight attendant removed. And that okay. was, you know, wasn't her call. And uh, she wasn't very happy about it. Mm-hmm. But that's unfortunate that, that, you know, they're worried yeah. about. But I think that happens a lot. A lot of you flight, so? a lot of flight attendants are afraid to call in sick, and will they, come to work sick. And yeah. I'm like, don't get me sick. Yeah, I don't want you. Yeah. Do you ever deal with exactly. that in the flight deck, Adam? Do you ever work with yes. other pilots that come to oh work God, sick, and so you're gross. like, dude, like we're five inches from each other? Well, that and we're touching everything, whether it be <gasps> the you know the controls. The guy in f- that gets off the plane before you uses the microphone, and he's been coughing all over. And then mm-hmm. I've got it right up against my mouth. Right. That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> so. Oh my god, do you use sandy wipes up there? Like, do you like sanitize everything? Again, this episode is not oh, brought yeah, to you I, by Purell, but it should no, be. It oh, should be. God. You should be dripping. Yeah, I have my I have my Clorox wipes. I wipe okay. the shit down <laughs> really. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah, Yeah, of course. It's gross. Oh, gross. Yeah, because um, I have a pilot friend who will send me messages be like, oh, my God, this captain I'm flying with is sick, coughing all over the flight deck. And I'm like, why don't you call in? No, I'm fine. And you're and I'm like. Like, yeah. yeah, like I hate it when flight attendants. I had a situation like that where this flight attendant, we were landing in Phoenix 
And while we were landing, she was in the lab throwing up. <gasps> this no. is a, yeah. And when we <laughs> landed, she came out and I said, you can't work this next flight. You have to call in. She goes, no, I can't. I was like, no, no, you, you it's not understand. an option. Yeah. You're calling in because you're throwing up in the lab and you're not doing your job. Yeah, that's not yep. okay. It's so that's time. interesting. I, but I was curious because um, to see if you had ever removed a flight attendant for their behavior. Mm. No, I, I thought that never, would be a good luckily. question. Have you had to make the decision to remove yeah. a passenger? Have you had to like there's come out couple. and like lay the hammer down? Yeah, there's been a, there's been a couple of interesting ones with uh, passengers. The last one I had was not too long ago um, down in Florida, and we were boarding our flight and. I hear my flight attendant talking to a gentleman saying, sir, come back here. You're bleeding. <gasps> so right, that caught my attention. I look behind me and he had blood pouring down his arm. Oh, oh wow. So oh. no idea what this guy did. And he's ignoring the flight attendant, just keeps going on down. And she's saying, sir, sir, you have to come back here. Let me help you. And then he, the profanity start, fuck you. Stop being a bitch. I'll do whatever I like and just keeps going to a seat, bleeding all over the place. Oh, mm. gross. So right there, I look at her. She looks at me, and he's not coming. He has to go. So yeah. we call the, the supervisors down okay. from the uh, airport. They come down, right. go talk to the guy. Now, I say, no, the supervisor's in the cockpit. This guy doesn't want to leave. What do you mean he doesn't want to leave? Let's just get him off the plane. Yeah. No, he doesn't want to go. So this is shortly after the famous dragging the doctor down the aisle incident. Oh, so we talked about that. that. Happen? Yeah. Do we want that to happen on our flight? I don't. I don't no want to be on YouTube no. personally. No way. So the only thing I came up with was, well, let's somehow get everyone off the plane. So made a quick announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a mechanical issue that's going to require everyone to deplane. Please right. grab your belongings and go. Oh. They start leaving the aircraft i followed the gentleman up he had no clue this was for him <laughs> the second he got to the gate area i said maintenance is fixed plane's fixed let's board you're oh, staying here wow. you're staying here buddy that oh because that's the only way you were going to get him off the plane wow. instead in, unless you way. guys were driving but see you guys work together as a team with the flight attendant and you actually um heard her and got up and said let me get involved mm -hmm. yes and i think yeah. i think that's important and i do believe that um it always, st I always, when I'm the lead flight attendant up front, I think that when the pilots come on, it, it, the way you act towards them mm -hmm. sets the tone. Absolutely. Sure. Because I've had pilots come on who are like not very friendly. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, hey, how are you today? Can I get you anything? Do you want any water? Do you want anything? And it, I, I literally watch them because they may be coming on going, what am I about to deal with? Of course. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, do you, do you meet all of your crew on your airplane? I meet everyone. Okay. I, I meet love that. Now, on those quick turns, you know, that first officer may not even see the flight turn in the back. I mean, right. if it's a quick turn, he's plugging stuff away up in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. He may not see anyone. I mean, I've heard from a couple of airlines, the loneliest person on the aircraft is the first officer because uh -huh. he doesn't get to talk to anyone. Yeah. Oh, cause but, what, cause, so when they sit down, they're plugging in the information, right? Some if it depends if it if especially if it's their leg to fly. I mean they're loading everything while we're back there briefing, especially if it's a new crew and changing you know flight members and flight tenants. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. so, wow. Yeah, but I definitely try to. Um, I mean you have to know who you're working with. Of course. Really do. I, you I appreciate know, that. When I'm when I'm working in the back, I don't know if you do this, LJ, but when I'm working in the back and I get new pilots on, I make a point to go up into the flight deck and say, hi, I'm Joe, because I always feel like I, not only that, but I want to know who's flying me. I want to know who's in charge of my life. Like, yeah, like I want to introduce myself so that I'm like, I know who these people are. Absolutely. I think that's important. Yeah. yeah. And I think pilots should be the same way. I want to know who's in the back Fly, I want to know because you're in charge of the airplane. I want to yeah. know who's back there. Yep. Yeah, I think that's important. I've had yep. pilots who are, who would come on and be like, uh, "I'm not gonna. T I don't want to talk to you. Don't interrupt us. Don't da 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 da. Really? Close the door. Oh yeah, I had mm. one that I was very unhappy with, and I was like, "Do you want to brief?" And he's like, "No, I'll just tell you." Um, 
and I had to like go and ask for a brief and all that kind of stuff. It was oh, a very unfortunate, very you know, situation. Yeah. You know, those those are the times where I'm like, that's unfortunate because I don't trust you now. Right. I have no yeah. relationship with you, and I, it may be one leg for you, but like, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, like- when they when they don't want to brief thoroughly, they don't want to brief. Yeah. They don't want to talk to you. Don't bother us. Don't da da da. I'm like, and I literally and he literally he like unleashed that. And then I was like, hi, I'm LJ by the way. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what Not am I gonna true. say? Yep. You know, yeah. that's really it's unfortunate. Um, but then you yep. have the others who go above and beyond. Right. Who one of the my most favorite things that some of the pilots do um, from my airline or whatever. Um, They'll come out of the cockpit and say hi to everybody, like on the, the plane, which I oh, love. Yeah. But they also make a point of like, you have, you know, three great flight attendants today. Please give them your respect and attention during the demo. They're in charge oh, of that. your safety. And I literally am like, you are my favorite human being on the planet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because it, I a thousand percent believe right. that changes things because then all of a sudden, oh, well, the captain said I should pay attention and listen to you. Right. But me telling you, do something you're not going to do it but when the captain no, did just gonna, it, it's, yeah they'll just read their reading their books and emails and paying attention to the phone and not going to do anything during the safety demo and totally. they're completely useless that's why we see <laughs> people with the masks over their chins and taking their bags right. off down the emergency slides. yeah because they it's don't pay attention ridiculous. there you go i um i just had this captain this is a funny story well frightening but funny he says he's giving us the brief and he says um i'm an ffdo which means he carries a gun in the mm-hmm. flight deck and he goes i don't yeah. know if i'm gonna wear it today i'm not in a good mood I'm sorry. Oh, I was like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> like, I'm not. So then when it was time for lav breaks, the two flight attendants were like, who goes up there? And I'm like, I'm senior. I'm not going up there. <laughs> He's a me. lunatic. But it was just so weird. He was like, yeah, I, I'm an FFDO, but I don't know if I'm going to put my gun on today because I'm really not in a good mood. And I thought, oh, all right. Well, if you start shooting, make sure it's the two junior ones. <laughs> Because I'm done. I don't give a damn. Like, I'm done. Like, yeah. And he was really. And when and he had this thing. He was like, don't slam the flight deck door. And we were like, "Okay." He goes, no, no, don't slam the flight deck door. And it was a long flight. So they came out like two or three times. And um, he was wonderful. I'm sure his wife just loves him. (laughs) And um, so whenever we would do lav breaks, he would be like, don't call. And he'd be like, don't. Sl-. I like, yes, don't slam the door. I know. We've heard. And then he actually told a passenger when when we were boarding, he told the passenger, I guess she slammed the door. And he the lead flight attendant said he said, don't don't we don't slam doors on my airplane. He told the passenger. Wow. that. Oh, okay. He's a lunatic. Clearly. Now. Yes, um, <laughs> but um, now. Adam, I've actually had um, a layover with you once. We were in the same city once. Um, we did, yes. Yeah, and it was in Chicago, I believe. And yep. I um, got so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a Tuesday night, and they were having half-off bottles of wine. Ooh. And I thought it would be a great idea to drink a bottle. By yourself. Yeah, just me, just because you. that's what I do. And um, do you remember that story, Adam? <laughs> I, I definitely remember that. Yeah. And do you remember? Was, uh, do you remember me missing the um, van time? <gasps> and yeah, you definitely you definitely missed the van time. I think I may have called you yes. to see where you were. Yeah, I answered the and phone. There may have been some profanities flying once you realized why I was calling you. I was like, "Hello," and he was like, "Joe, it's van time." I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> And then tell, t- um, please remind everyone, and LJ, this is great, what the captain was doing at the van. Ooh. The captain was a dick. Oh. Do you remember was, that? Uh, not happy. He was pacing because we thought he thought he, we were going to be extremely late for report time. Um, very rude. So to rude. you. He was so rude to me. Act, Did you, like, throw your clothes on and make like, it down to the van? I, um, oh, it was so dramatic. I threw my clothes on. I run downstairs and then I can't find my phone <gasps> because I thought I threw it across the room. So then I'm trying to go back upstairs and this captain's on the bus, on the van, telling people, sorry, we're late. It's my flight attendant. Flight um, attendant's fault. Oh, <laughs> my God. It was a bad day. And then my be- my phone was in my bag. And um, when we got to the gate, the plane wasn't even there yet. The plane wasn't even there. Because no, in the airline industry... 
Oh my god! Yeah, it was a disaster. Wow. I, so I blame this pilot, Adam, for that. It's clearly, it's clearly, it's Adam's fault. Yeah. Obviously, it was my, it was definitely my fault. Yeah, well, and of course, that. you were, the, you were the pilot, so of course it was your fault. But obviously. oh my god, that was oh the god. only time that's ever happened to me. But do you, um, we, we, we did sing Salt and Pepper together, though. Ooh, um, we did. We did sing Salt yeah. and Pepper. Where's I don't the video on that? We could, we can cut that, that in. That was a little shoot. There was shoe happening. There was shoe happening. I just remember being a bottle in, and then when Adam's like, "It's time for," because it was me and the other flight Let's attendant. Sing along. And when mm -hmm. it was time to go, I was like, "No, it's not time to go." And they're like, "No, no, it's time to go." And TLC's on. I was like, "No, it's not time to go." And uh, did you just say TLC? Yeah. Is it's, it TLC? It's salt and pepper. Oh. This is soon to be called Confessions on the Fly with Adam and Joe. <laughs> I'm, oh I'm in the penalty box. Oh, clearly. my God, you're in the penalty. But now, do you hang out with flight attendants? I, I know you hung out with me because I'm amazing. But, <laughs> yeah. but do you hang out with flight attendants? Is that the norm? Um, I will definitely try. I always, you know, when we get to layovers, I always make the suggestion, you know, going out and going out. If you're more than welcome to join me, you know, and lately... It's been there's been a lot of slam clickers between flight tents and other pilots. Interesting. But, uh, Interesting. Yeah, I don't know really what's going on. There's been a trend of slam clickers, and if people don't know what that is, you slam the door and click the lock and don't answer the phone. <gasps> yes. But don't answer the yeah. phone. But do you still yeah. go do stuff? I go out all the time. Yeah. I hate sitting in my hotel room. I'll go out if I have time to go out. I go out Got every it. single day ever. I like so, that. So, but yeah, if, if a flight attendant's game to go out, I'll go out. That's, I'll go explore the city. I'll do whatever. That's so, great. I mean, yeah. obviously, on like short layovers when you you don't have sure. much time, do you, are you a slam clicker in that sense? When you, I'll like, still go down for a quick dinner and bite to eat and always okay. invite the other people to come down oh, with that's me. That's really so, nice. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, definitely, I think for long layovers, I'm always somebody who's like out and about. And I mm -hmm. always want to do things with my crew or pilots or whatever, yes. uh -huh. um, because maybe it's someplace I've never been before and they have. I'd love to get other people's insight and stuff like that. Um, yep. I know me personally when it's like a very short lay. I always get short layovers because I'm super, super junior. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't get those long, luxurious layovers. But when I do, I love to go out and, you know, explore a new city. But if I have a short layover, I get that kind of slam clicking. Why do you sure. think that's a trend right now of people just slam clicking I it? Don't know. I wish I did, but yeah. I have not figured it out yet. I'll save that for another episode oh, once yeah. I have figured it out. I, um, yeah, that's interesting. That's I bummer. think that there is a lot. I don't think the 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 cockpit, the cockpit, that's Ooh. a bar somewhere. I went to that bar in Houston. Is it really? Place, and it's straight. <laughs> I was voguing on the bar. I was crazy <laughs> when I became a flight attendant at the beginning. Hey. Um, but I think there's a lot of I don't think the cockpit or the flight deck and the cabin, I don't think there's a lot of friendship right cohesive, now. Cohesive, yeah. Cohesive, like, oh, teamwork. I yeah. feel like, and I, I actually there's, blame there's it. There's tension on, out there. I blame it on the airlines. Oh, really? I firmly believe, and I'm not a conspiracy person, Ooh. but I firmly believe the airlines set it up so that there is that slight hierarchy well no th there, there's a slight uncomfortable where i don't want to get too friendly with the pilots and the pilots don't want to get too friendly with the flight attendants what do you think know. about that adam what do you think about that um i i can i will agree with that i think that is going on because the, back when you started the airlines and even at the airline i'm at now we used to do layovers together we used to stay mm -hmm. together for four days or three days however long the trip was and you really built a relationship with those flight attendants. Right. I mean, there was always at least someone you could hang out with on every trip. Right. And you made it work and you had a great time. Now, like you're saying, you may fly with a flight four or five different crews in a day. And right. Yeah. And you then, don't get to know people anymore. And, you know, some people may have a bad image of a set of pilots from a certain base. Mm -hmm. And if you're from that oh, base... Yes. Oh, By the way, you're, you're those guys. You're lumped and in on it. That's the, you are, exactly, right away. Wow. If there's one thing that you could say, like one thing to me or, or LJ, like flight attendants, like how can we approach pilots 
um, to make it a little bit better? Like, what can we do? Um, Not in a creepy way. Well, oh, I was going to say <laughs> as many hand jobs as possible. Okay, I, every, I go up to the flight deck every flight that's hoping. That's the first. That's oh, the first. Oh, I'm still praying. <laughs> but it hasn't happened yet. <sighs> but no, seriously, um, what could we do? Really? I mean, the biggest thing is just be part of the crew. Like, you should give everyone the attention that is required show that you're actually listening to the pilot mm -hmm. when they're talking to you and we'll do the same for you hopefully right. i yeah. mean granted those, those guys out there but just show you part of the crew and you know willing to work together and that will do it i mean it doesn't take much to get through a flight Totally. Uh, I, I also think, you know, I've seen when I come on the airplane, say the pilots are already on the airplane mm -hmm. and I'm mm -hmm. and I'm usually the aft flight attendant because I can't handle being up front. Yeah. I can't do wheelchairs anymore. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, so I come on board and if the pilots are in the flight deck, I stick my head in there and I'm like, hi, I'm Joe. I'm in the back. I'm, you know, the aft flight attendant. They're totally. like, oh, hey. And they love that because yeah. I've heard like. Oh, flight attendants, they just walk on and they go to the back and they they don't come in and say hi. Mm -hmm. And they just and that sets the tone right there, totally. too. It really I does. I like really just, appreciate that. Yeah. Stick yeah. your head in there. Say, hey, yeah. you know, are we all going on the layover tonight? <laughs> yeah. Who's buying drinks? Exactly. You know? I think that changes the mood and, and lightens the mood and stuff like that. I think like so. That, for I sure. think it does. I, I do does. have to say, though, when I started, um, I remember distinctly remember them making a big point at tr at my training situation of like no no fraternizing with the pilots. So that I can't believe I that. I think so. Really? I don't know why it is. I think I don't know like maybe the old school you know reputations of like right. pilots and flight attendants. I'm like yeah, but like we still have to work together right. and like we are yeah. a team. So yeah, yeah, we get it. No one's like it's not everyone like having a huge. Orgy. Yeah, thank you. No, oh it's, it's not like the, uh, the heyday of the flying heyday, back in the 60s yeah. and 70s. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, my God, why wasn't I a flight attendant the, back that then? Was, that was your time That's period. So, I know, I so missed all the orgies, the stuff. all the flight deck orgies and everything. Yeah. Oh, my God, Smoking we should bring that back. On, on oh, I don't want to smoke cigarettes. I don't want to do that either, but I just think it's, I don't know. When people actually dressed up on airplanes oh, and, yeah. like, looked oh, nice yeah. and not looked like... Walmart shoppers. There you go. I'm sorry. Yeah. I said it. There I said go. it. That's I said fine. it. Look like you got the special at Walmart coming on the airplane. Yeah, they did their hair and makeup and oh. put clothes on. They wore suits. Yes. And, and they didn't have sex in the labs. Pajamas. Yes, pajamas. exactly. Yeah. That's true. So ridiculous. But listen, we want to play a yes. game with you, Adam, Yay. before we let you go. Okay. And it's called Rapid Flyer. Rapid Flyer! Boop, 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 boop. I'm making all this up. So listen, LJ, we want to see if you can answer these questions in one minute. There's okay. 10 questions. Are okay. you ready? I think so. Do you Are you, are you holding on to your joystick? Because it's, mm -hmm. it's a game. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. Ready? Are we ready? Yep. All right. Yeah. Favorite layover? Um, Washington, D.C. Never leave home without... Uh, kids or pets? Ooh, pets. Flight deck or cockpit? How do you call cockpit. it? Cockpit. Mm -hmm. One place you've always wanted to visit? Alaska. Would you rather be delayed or canceled? Canceled. Red eyes, yes or no? Hell no. First thing you do at the hotel? Get out of my uniform. Go, go out or slam click? Oh, go out. Thank you. That's it. Yes. How yes, did you do? Did great. Was it 10 or 9? I think it was nine. only 9. Yeah, uh, mine was oh, 9 too when okay. I did one too. So 9. What, what's, how, what was his score? 43 seconds. I have to tell you, Adam, that is the worst score we've had. <laughs> <laughs> but that was fun. I that love that game. So LJ, LJ came up with that game. Yay. She and I like it. And I yeah. want. Yeah. And I'm always confused because some people say flight like I say flight deck. Mm -hmm. um, but I got yelled at by a pilot. There, he was like, it's the cockpit. We've been calling it the cockpit for so many years. And I was like, well, unfortunately, if you're not giving me cock in the cockpit, then it's a flight deck. <laughs> people still call me a stewardess. So oh, they call you more than that. <laughs> but that's enough. <laughs> All right, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Being our first pilot on Confessions on the Fly. Well, thank you very much for having me. I very really exciting. It. I hope we weren't too inappropriate. We were actually, this was like PG. Yeah, this was really good. Yeah. I'm very impressed. You only said 
F word twice. I only said fuck twice. Yep. Adam and said it twice, too, or once. Oh, did I? Yeah, you did. Oh, think... You are filthy. But thank you so thank much you for coming account. on with us today. We really appreciate it. We keep track of everybody's foul mouths here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Adam. Thanks and thanks for listening in on Confessions on the Fly with LJ and Flight Attendant Joe and guest host, no, not host, guest, guest star, star Adam, pilot Adam. Thank you, guys.